welcome to physics made easy channel now we shall be doing law of radioactive disintegration radioactivity is a spontaneous process which does not depend upon external factors like temperature pressure the decay of radioactive element depends upon law of chance that's it's a statistical process it means that it is impossible to predict which particular atom of the nucle of the radioactive element will disintegrate in a given time interval it's better to think most of the books as well as uh, people they write atom but it is nuclei it is nuclei it shouldn't be atom it means it is impossible to predict which particular nuclei of the radioactive element will disintegrate in a given time now the algebraic sum of charges before the disintegration must be equal to the total electric charge after disintegration so third the sum of the masses of initial particles must be equal to sum of mass numbers of final particle this is the next condition mass of final particles the sum of masses of uh, the sum of mass numbers of uh, reactant should be equal to the sum of mass numbers of products the algebraic sum of charges before the disintegration must be equal to the total electric charge after disintegration so these two will be clear from uh, a reaction for example we take this reaction let an alpha particle be emitted for example i take a nuclei here uh, z x t it breaks up into y z minus 2 a minus 4 plus 2 helium 4 so this is the reaction of alpha particle now z minus 2 plus 2 will become z on right side and z on left side a a is equal to a minus 4 plus 4 it will be a on right hand side and a on left hand side the sum of the mass number of initial particles must be equal to the sum of the mass numbers of final particles must be equal to the sum of mass numbers of final particles so these two facts clear so now we can take mass number mass number on left hand side is a and mass number on right hand side is a minus 4 plus 4 so it will come out to be a on right as well as on left side next is displacement law for radioactive transformations when a radioactive nuclei emits alpha particle alpha particle its atomic number decreases by 2 and mass number decreases by 4 z x a it breaks up into z minus 2 x a minus 4 why why because the alpha particles the basic structure of alpha particles is 2 helium 4 when a radioactive nuclei emits beta particle its atomic number is increased by 1 but mass number remains same now i have got z x a z plus 1 y a plus an electron this is electron to beta particle is basically an electron So when beta particle is emitted, so if we write reaction directly parallel to this Z axis, it 
beta particle is emitted z plus 1 x a plus we can write beta particle minus beta 0. So beta particle is basically electron. The emission of gamma ray the emission of gamma ray does not change the mass number or the atomic number of the radioactive nucleus. And the next part is duration. During disintegration of an atom, either an alpha particle or beta particle is emitted. It means either alpha particle will be emitted or beta particle will be emitted. Both of these, they are not simultaneously emitted. Both of these particles are never emitted simultaneously. Also at the same time, an atom will not emit more than one alpha particle and more than one beta particle. Gamma ray emission follows the emission of alpha or beta particle. Decay loss, the number of atoms disintegrated per second at any instant is directly proportional to the number of radioactive atoms actually present in the sample at that instant. This is known as radioactive decay law. The number of atoms disintegrated per second, that is rate of disintegration at an instant is directly proportional to the number of radioactive atoms actually present in the sample at that instant. This is also known as radioactive decay law. Thus, larger the number of undecayed nuclei present in the sample of an element, faster will be the rate of decay. Now, let us write this in mathematical sense. Let n naught be the total number of undecayed nuclei present. Total number of undecayed nuclei is present n naught n naught total number of undecayed nuclei n is they are originally present at time t is equal to 0 let n be the total number of undecayed nuclei at any time t. Let in the next time d n atoms disintegrate in time dt. It means rate of disintegration is d n by dt minus sign has been taken because of decay or decrease in number. This is directly proportional to number of atoms present at that time, which is n. So it is clear that dn by dt minus this is equal to lambda n. Or dn by dt is equal to minus lambda n. Equation number 1. And now note down here very important fact. dn we have I have just written minus dn by dt. This is disintegration rate this is equal to lambda into n now this minus dn by dt is called activity or rate of decay i will represent it by r so what i can say that r rate of decay 
is equal to lambda n. Where lambda is decay constant and n is the number of atoms present at that time. Now, dn by dt is equal to lambda n. dn by n is equal to lambda dt. Now, integrate. d by dt is lambda dt. If we integrate from limit 0 here we have got negative sign and here we have got negative sign. We won't put limits now. So this d n by n integration of this is log of n is equal to minus lambda into t plus constant of integration c. Now we have got initial conditions from here. I can write log n is equal to minus lambda t plus c. Now at t is equal to 0, n is equal to n naught. at t is equal to 0, n is equal to n naught. From here, what I can write, let it be equation number 2. From here, I can write, 2 becomes equation 2 will now become log n naught is equal to minus lambda into 0 plus c. c is equal to log n naught. Let it be equation number 3. So this is log n is equal to log n naught. I have written it in place of t, c, constant c. We have used the value of c in this equation, in this particular equation. Now, after this equation, I will take this to left side. So this will be log n minus log n naught is equal to minus lambda t. Now from here, log n minus log n naught is equal to minus uh, lambda t. Now this, this particular equation log n minus log n naught. Log, we know one formula that is log m minus log n is equal to log m divided by n. Similar formula I will use here. So this will be log n divided by n naught is equal to minus lambda t. And this implies, now I will take anti-log. After taking anti-log, it will become n divided by n naught is equal to e raised to power minus lambda t. This implies n is equal to n naught e raised to power minus lambda t. This is a very important expression which is used in 
decay process n is equal to n naught e raised to power minus lambda t. And uh, now, what does this mean? The number of undecayed atom at time t is equal to n naught into e raised to power minus lambda t. Lambda is a constant, we call it disintegration constant. The number of active nuclei in a radioactive sample decreases exponentially with time. The disintegration is faster at the beginning and it slows down because at the beginning the number of undecayed nuclei is large in comparison to the number of undecayed nuclei when the process is near ending. The large value of lambda decay constant, the larger the value of decay constant, higher will be the rate of disintegration. Irrespective of the nature of radioactive sample, it takes infinitely long time to disintegrate completely. For example, he is saying that the curve is exponential one. What does this mean? I will draw the curve here. This is x axis, this is y axis. Along this axis, I am taking time. This is time t and along this axis you can even take n by n naught. Now this curve is exponential one like this, exponentially decreasing curve. So this curve decreases exponentially. like this. Now this will actually take infinite time to completely disintegrate. So if uh, I take peak at round this then n by n not by 2 here, n not by 4 here, n not by 5 here. Now they are taking longer and longer time. <clears throat> no individual atom. Now, remember one thing. Radioactivity is a statistical process. It is a statistical process. Statistical process. Statistical process means applicable to very large number. Applicable to very large numbers. For example, lakhs and crores. And not even to thousands. Lakhs and crores. No important, this is very important point. No individual atom can simultaneously emit both alpha and beta particles. Different atoms of same element can emit either an alpha particle or a beta particle. No emission of beta particle is usually accompanied by emission of gamma particle. The name the emission of beta particle is usually accompanied by the emission of gamma particle. For example, there is a famous uh, reaction. For example, bismuth breaks up into lead and then gamma radiation is emitted. There is a famous reaction. So that we will do in gamma radiation, uh, rest assured. 
important point is no individual atom can simultaneously emit both alpha and beta particle matlab ki this reaction is invalid if i make uh, if i create this reaction that it breaks up into z minus 1 z minus 3 say y a minus 4 plus alpha plus beta particle this reaction is here i have got an example beta particle z x a emits a beta particle it it becomes z plus 1 y a plus beta and now this z plus 1 y a is in excited state i will write here uh, star this is in excited state it will de excite and emit gamma radiation beta ray emission is followed by gamma ray emission no individual atom can simultaneously emit both alpha and beta particles and now we shall be doing decay constant decay constant is very important now this is we know the decay law in simple form as n is equal to n not e raised to power minus lambda t now i will put t is equal to 1 by lambda so this equation will become this will become n is equal to n not e raised to power minus lambda into 1 by lambda they cancel out n is equal to n not e raised to power minus 1 or n is equal to n not by e so now disintegration constant is reciprocal of time from here if i calculate lambda lambda is 1 by t disintegration constant is reciprocal of time in which the number of particles decay to n not by e now let us see the definition the radioactive decay constant lambda is reciprocal of the time interval during which the number of active nuclei in a given radioactive sample is reduced to 38 36.8% of its initial value or in another way we know that d n by d t is equal to minus lambda n d n by n is equal to minus lambda d t the radioactive decay constant may now from here i can calculate the value of lambda lambda can be d n by n this d n by d t this further divided by n that is rate of disintegration divided by the number of active nuclei at that time the radioactive decay may be defined as ratio of instantaneous rate of disintegration this instantaneous rate of disintegration is d n by d t if i divide it by n i will get decay constant <coughs> So in this way, decay constant can also be defined as instantaneous rate of disintegration divided by number of active nuclei present at that time. N is the number of active nuclei present, and d n by d t is the rate of disintegration. Before finishing this lecture, I will request all of you to kindly view the video. and comment on it if you don't like and if you like then kindly share it so that we can serve you in a better manner 
in my next uh, session i will cover half life of radioactive element